Hey guys, so um, it's December 18th today and I know it's been a while since I made a video. I'm sorry about that. Um, I know some people are wondering what happened with surgery and if I'm alright. And the short version is, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I just haven't really felt up to making a video until now. Um, so I guess I'll just give you the whole spiel. Um, so last Wednesday was my pre-op. Um, and I finally got to meet McLean and everybody at the clinic, and they were all super nice. Um, I told him that because I still wasn't 100% sure if I was allergic to morphine or not, that I'd prefer to have um, a prescription for a pain medication that was not morphine-based. So he gave me that. Um, everything was cool. Um, Thursday came in for surgery. Um, everything was good with that. I fainted when they put the IV in, but other than that, everything was fine. Um, when I got out, they said that it looked great, everything went well, there were no complications. Um, I was kind of surprised at how quickly they rushed me out of there, but, um, I went home or to the hotel and slept for a bit, took the pain medication. Um, it became apparent very quickly that the medication wasn't strong enough for me. Um, I usually have a high pain threshold and it wasn't my chest that hurt, um, it, like it wasn't the incisions that hurt, it was actually my back from the binder I think. Um, but it was really really bad so I decided um, on Friday when I went in for my post-op that I would ask for the morphine based drug um, because I probably wasn't allergic to it. So they gave me their prescription for that on Friday, looked at my um, incisions and the nurse found that there was a, quite a large hematoma on the left side. So um, she tried to aspirate it with a syringe, which didn't work because the blood had coagulated already. So she said that um, I should wait like past the weekend that it might get more liquid and they would try again on Monday and if not then they would have to drain it. Um, so I went home and I took the Percocet and Friday was good. Friday I slept a lot, it made me really drowsy, there was no pain, um, I was very relaxed from the drugs and it was good, everything was fine. By Saturday midday it became very evident that my body did not like the Percocet. Um, I was experiencing a lot of weird side effects that, after talking to a few people, um, I realized was actually from the perk set, and it only got worse throughout the day. Um, by the time I wanted to go to bed, like 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, um, I had a horrible headache, like super sensitive to light and to sound, especially like every time anybody made any noise, it, sound, it felt like someone was cracking a whip in my skull. Um, not pleasant. Um, the only thing I could liken it to was is having a really bad concussion. That's what it kind of felt like. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night with the shakes. Um, it really looked like I was going through withdrawal or something. I had decided to take... Um, like once I realized that it was the Percocet that was doing this to me, I decided that I would take it one more time before I went to bed and hopefully it would knock me out. And then the next day, like on on uh, Sunday, that I would just stick to Tylenol, purely Tylenol. Um, and it just, it was a bad idea to take that before I went to bed. And I wasn't even taking the dose that I was given. Like they told me to take two every four hours and I was only taking one every four hours. And I woke up in the middle of the night with the worst headache I have ever had in my life, possibly the worst pain I've ever had in my life. I really hope I don't have to experience that again. Um, but once um, it kind of worked its way out of my system on Sunday, I felt a lot better and a lot more with it. Um, so from then on, I've just been taking Tylenol and I've been fine with that. On Monday, I went in for um, them to check the hematoma and McLean looked at it and said that he would have to drain it and from what I understood the week before that meant just possibly like numbing the area and taking a syringe like they had tried last time um, and that it just might take a while 
but what it actually meant was putting me under again and like essentially cutting open the incision, sticking a drain in and flushing out the fluid. Um, so I had to go under again, which was not fun because I reminded the, the nurse, because it was a different nurse from my surgery, that I had passed out when they put the IV in, so she said that they would just do it in the OR. And while I was lying on the table, they gave me oxygen and the anesthesiologist um, started setting up the IV and he, I don't know, like, he, my eyes were closed, he, I felt it go into my arm, like really, really, really felt it go into my arm. Um, he started swearing, asked for a, like something to wipe stuff away with. Um, I don't know if my arm was like bleeding. A nurse asked if he wanted um, like a swab and he's like, no, a small towel. He kept on dropping things and swearing. Like, I don't know what was going on. It was to the point where I actually asked them, am I supposed to be asleep right now? Like, I really, that was not fun. Um, but when I woke up, McLean said it was cool, um, that it went well, that he left the drain in and that I should come in the following day to get that removed and that there might be some like fluid leaking because the drain was still there um, so that I should just keep an eye on that. So I felt surprisingly good that day though. It was a less intense sedative that they had given me so um, I like was with it quite a bit quicker than at, right after the surgery. Um, and uh, I went back yesterday for him to check it. He took the drain out, said that it looked good. Um, and that was actually the first time that I looked at my chest. I had been really hesitant to look down because of the hematoma. Like, my, my friend that was with me said it was like the size of a tennis ball. So I was really, really not okay to look at it up until yesterday. Um, and he had like a gauze covering where the drain had just come out of. So at least like I didn't have to look at that part. And just now I um change that gauze so i really got a, like the full view of my chest for the first time and it just i mean i that you can't tell like it looks like a battlefield i'm like so bruised it's ridiculous um but you know i battle obviously go away i have the appointment to get my graphs off on friday morning um and then depending on how i feel after that um, my dad and i might just head home straight from mclean's place so yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Um, I did take a picture um, just now when I changed my gauze. Um, I'll probably post it to my Tumblr, but it's really, really, really bruised. Like, if you don't want to see it, don't look. I'll put the link below, but really don't look if you're squeamish, because it's disgusting. Um, and I don't know how to, like, hide a picture so that you have to like click on it to look at it. I don't know how to do that. So like chances are if you click on the link to my Tumblr, that will be the first thing that comes up. So I'm just warning you. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, I'm, I think I'm happy with the results, but like I said, so bruised that you can't really tell. And it's even hard to tell, like, the placement of the nipples, if I like it or not, but I really trust McLean, so I'm sure it'll be good. Um, and then I'm just hoping that on Friday everything goes well with the grass, because at this point I'm just assuming something else will go wrong. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I've rambled on for long enough. Um, I'll definitely post pictures when I have actually nice things to look at um but yeah just wanted to make a video to say that i'm alive and to kind of voice what happened before i forget the timeline and chronology and everything so yep um hope you guys are all doing well and uh, i'll make another update soon